This is the new Audi Q5. So what's new about it? Well, in this video, I'm going to tell you because Audi has made a midlife facelift to this car. So I'm going to talk you through all the upgrades and changes over the previous version. And you'll be able to find out whether you think it's a better buy than a BMW X3 or a Mercedes GLC. Obviously, I'm going to take it for a drive. And as part of that, I'm going to test its real world economy. Also, because I'm at a track, I'm going to time it from 0 to 60, see how quick it is, because this is the turbo petrol engine. If I've got enough space, I'm even going to try and do a standing quarter mile in it, because that's really important consumer testing. Now, the reason I'm doing it is because I'm Matt Watson, and this is Car Wow. Buying a new car? Then head to Car Wow, and my team will help you find your next car at a fair price. Car Wow, your one-stop car buying comparison site. Let's kick off this video by talking about the price. So the new Q5 range kicks off from around £43,000. Thankfully though, look at this, you can save an average of just over £4,000 off a new Q5 through CarWow. So if you want to see how much you can save on one of these new cars right now, I'll put a little link up there, popping out in the top right corner of the screen. Click on that, you go straight to CarWow, check it out. Alternatively, if you want to do that at a later date or after this video, you can simply Google Help Me CarWow and me and my team will help you choose the right car for you and get it for a fair price from one of our trusted dealers. Let's talk about the design changes Audi has made to the Q5. Now it's always been a stylish looking SUV, but they've tried to make it even more desirable by giving it some new tail light design, the LED. Though on four spring, the top of the range car, you actually get OLED tail lights like on your mobile phone. There's also this big strip running across the back of the car. On normal cars, it's silver, but on four spring or this edition one, you get it in black. There's also some new bumper designs as well here at the rear no, I'm not so sure about this let me I need to just nip into the woods to get something to just check okay right I've got my log of truth yeah huge 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 yet fake exhaust I mean what on earth Audi it's terrible. <laughs> now I've got really dirty hands. Great. I feel dirty actually just looking at those. It's just horrible. Anyway, right down the side, pretty much the same as before. You do have some new alloy wheel designs. They started 18 inches. These are 20 inches on this car, though they do go all the way up to 21, which you get as standard on the four sprung. Also, there's some new side cells. These are in carbon. Pretty sure these are an optional extra. But in the first edition, you also get the Audi logo there, the four rings very sporty are. Same as before down the side pretty much. At the front there are some changes though. You've got LED headlights as standard but from S-line trim and above you get matrix LEDs so they'll do that thing with a blank out part of their beam so they don't dazzle oncoming drivers and of course being an Audi they do that clever little dance when you turn them off and on. It's really nice. Now the grille what they've done they've actually widened it. Oh I forgot my hands were all dirty. Anyway they made it wider, but it's a bit shallower. It looks very similar to the old grill. Once again, being the Edition 1 and the Wolfsburg had the black surround rather than just a normal silver surround. And the rest of the bumper is slightly different than before. Yeah. Oh, and there's some very, very fake vents at the front here as well. So you've got fakery at the front as well as at the back. Bravo, Audi. Let's check out the inside, see what's new in here. So the biggest change here in the Q5's cabin is this the new infotainment system. So you've got this large touchscreen on top of the dash, standard on every single model, and you've got Audi's latest operating system. It's fairly easy to use, satellite navigation, Bluetooth, all that kind of stuff, but you're not gonna use those. You're just gonna plug your phone in, use Apple CarPlay or Android Auto. That's what I do. You also get the digital driver's display as standard now on the Q5. Love this system, it's really clear, easy to use. You can just cycle through different menus, get lots of different information, and you can change the view of it as well to go full widescreen on your satellite navigation. Lovely jubbly. Another change are some different fabrics for the seats. So this being the Edition 1, gets quilted leather. You also get that on the Range Topping Forsbrook model. Lower down with the S-Line, you get Alcantara and leather. Then you get two types of leather on the entry level Sport model. Seats themselves, very comfy. Driving position, brilliant as well, really like it. You're gonna find it easy to get an ideal driving position as well. And look at this. Oh yeah, this car I've got here has an electronic steering column, which is actually slower to operate than, <laughs> than the manual one. 
but it does feel premium and the rest of the cabin feels premium so build quality is very good in here everything feels solid most of the materials are very very nice i do like it quite a lot there is one thing that's a bit odd though in the old car you used to have a swivel wheel to control the infotainment system which admittedly is a bit easier to use when you're driving than prodding away at a screen but because they've removed it they've now replaced that with a very pointless cubby hole. There's also another pointless cubby hole here next to the USB charging point in the 12 volt socket because I don't know what you're going to put in there. There's no way you're going to fit a modern mobile phone in there because it's way too small. There's another weird slap there which doesn't fit anything in particular. <laughs> Can't criticize this though. Look at this, all right? So the cover for the cup holders has a wireless charging mat on it so you can put your phone there slide it away and it's still charging. I think that's brilliant. Unfortunately, wireless charging is only standard on the range topping Vorsprung model. Thanks, Audi. Now the cup holders there won't fit my very big bottle, but they will fit a normal size bottle or flask. Underneath here, if I slide that out of the way, you've got another USB port there and you've got some place to store some bits and pieces. The glove box, average. It's lined with felt, it's nice. I don't know why they do this still. I think these are little holders for coins. <laughs> and then door bins, good size. They will fit this big bottle look, no problem at all. Nice practical cabin and the layout of everything's really simple as well. I like the fact that you've got normal climate control buttons here and dials and knobs and stuff like that. It's just easy to use when you're driving and you have your temperature displayed within those dials. Very nice. Very, very nice. Let's go to the back and check that out. So, there is no change really here at all. Apart from, no, not even that. I was thinking that they are gonna switch the USBs to USB-C to be all modern about it, but they're not. They're just normal ones there, but you got two and 12 volt socket. Plus, look, netted, netted. Give me a moment. Ooh, ooh, come on. Ooh, 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 ooh. <sighs> car reviewing indignity with Matt Watson. <sighs> yeah, big <laughs> door bins in the back here. It is very practical in the back, just like in the front. And lots of knee room. Headroom's good as well, even though this car is fitted with the glass roof, which is optional. And that does eat into headspace, but it doesn't really matter because this car's so tall anyhow. Look at this as well. You can pay extra to have slidey seats if you want here in the back. They all do recline though if you need them to so very good for carrying passengers in the back if you need to carry three people at once you can do though this middle seat is a bit narrow and there's this huge lump in the floor which you have to straddle ah. and really i do think that mercedes glc is slightly better for carrying three people in the back at once now if you want to find out more about the mercedes glc and what i think of it then i'm just going to put a little link up there it should be popping out in the top right hand corner of the screen if you click that, you can go check out that review and see what I think about the GLC. Maybe it's better for you, who knows? When it comes to fitting a child seat in the back of this car, I can't really complain, other than the fact that you have flip-off Isofix covers. No, you don't. What do you? Have we lost them? Yeah, see? That's a problem when you have flip-off covers. Someone removes them and they get lost. Fitting the child seat in here is dead easy though because the back doors open nice and wide. You don't have to move this front passenger chair forward at all, even to fit one of those big bulky rear facing seats. So that's good. This is also good as well. Look, you've got an armrest and the cup holders are covered until you need them. So you don't end up putting your arm in there. Like that. Also, look at this. Come on, where's the button? The seats fold three ways which means that you have quite a big space if you need to carry longer items and still two people either side in the back. So that's all good. Very practical car, this. Let's check out the boot. See what it's like for carrying stuff. So, come on. Oh yes, we've got an electronic tailgate. Or is that electric? I don't really have a very good grasp of the English language, do I? So let's have a look at this. Come on, do it. Oh, I didn't, there we go. Let me remove this actually get out of the way. I'm trying to do this while like hovering away from this tailgate because as you can see it's just covered in grime. It's not because we're lazy and can't be bothered to clean the car. We've just driven it around our track a few times and this has happened. We did clean it. Come on. 
Okay, so this is annoying. Uh, there we go. It helps if you do it from both sides. This is nice and light, which is handy when you're removing it. Here we have the boot. Lovely boot, nice square shape. The capacity is 550 litres, which is exactly the same as a BMW X3 and a Mercedes GLC. You can carry seven of those airplane size carry-on luggage cases in this car's boot underneath that load cover, which is really good. It's pretty nice features as well. Look, you've got uh, nettage there, you've got tie-down points, you've got hawks. I was looking for the 12 volt socket, but I can't see it. There it is. <laughs> I knew it was in here somewhere, it's down in there. I like this feature as well. Not all cars have this, but they should have, especially if they're SUVs. Release handles from the back seats here in the boot. That is really good. It's just annoying that you then have to walk round and do this. Then you do have a nice flat load bait, and so it's easier. When I say flat, it's not quite flat, it's raised up, but it's easy enough to just slide things to the front like that. There we go. Almost disproved my theory then by getting it stuck. Let's try again. <laughs> I got it stuck the other way. Look. Okay, it's not perfect. I'll tell you another thing that's not perfect is this. So there's not much of one, but there is a little bit of a low lip. So not only can you not, bloody hell. Why am I making this so difficult? So not only can I not slide things quite as easy as I'd like to, to the front of the vehicle, you can't quite slide them out because you do have to lift them up a little bit for this tiny little load lift. It is a little bit annoying and that does bring me on to five annoying things about the new Audi Q5. S-Line models get lowered stiffened sport suspension which can feel a bit bumpy. Now you used to be able to switch that out for the softer suspension from the sport model if you wanted to. For a charge your dealer would do it, but not anymore. The only way to make this car softer is to pay £1,700 for the optional air suspension. Quite a lot of money. Do you think that on an SUV, the rear windows would go all the way down so you can get a good view out, but they don't, they don't look. So when you rest your arm on there, it's on the window. Great. When you get out of the car at the side of the road at night, because you've forgotten something, you need to check that it's in your boot. You open the boot, you lose those lights, and these little ones come on down here. I'm sorry, but they're really no substitute for those proper big tail lights. That would make me a bit uneasy. The sunroof blind on this car is so, so slow that I could probably get out and walk around the car one or maybe two times while it's doing its thing. So let's find out if I can. One. See. The load cover, once removed, unfortunately will not fit underneath this false floor because there's really hardly any room underneath there, isn't there? Look. Yeah, that's no good. So, you know what that means? Oh gosh. Now, I normally do this with really cheap parcel shells, but this is quite an expensive looking one. Sorry, I'm about to do this Audi. Right. I've got to be fair and consistent across all brands. Be off! Some guy in Audi Germany is watching this video going, why are we lending this idiot this cars? Don't worry, there's still plenty to like about this car. Here's the car wow, five core cool features. The Q5 gets a new two litre diesel engine and its crankcase is made out of aluminium. And as a result, it's 20% lighter than the old two litre diesel engine. It also gets twin injection and blue technology for reduced emissions. If you get the range shopping Vorsprung model, you can choose between three different light designs for the OLED tail lights. So they could look like this or slightly different, depending on your preference. If you get the comfort and sound pack for 1350 quid, you get a lovely Bang & Olufsen sound system with 19 speakers, a 16 channel amplifier and 755 watts of power. And um, while I'm sat here, look at this, look at the Audi logo, <laughs> puddle lights. Lovely. The Q5 is available with Amazon Alexa voice control, so you can do things like place orders while you're driving just by saying what you'd like to buy. You can even control smart devices in your home from the comfort of your car, so everything is set up for you when you return home. See that there? Look. Eyes fixed anchor points on the front passenger seat, which is handy if you need to carry three baby seats in a car at once because you're either a babysitter or really unlucky and have triplets. Sorry, lucky. Lucky to have triplets. Now let's talk about the engine choices in the Q5. So, range kicks off with a two litre 
diesel. So that has 204 horsepower, but you can get a three litre V6 diesel in the SQ5 that has 351 horsepower. Then there's this two litre turbo petrol, which has 265 horsepower, or you can get two plug-in hybrids, which use a two litre turbocharged petrol engine mated to an electric motor. The low power version has 299 horsepower, while the high power version has 370 horsepower. All Q5s are all wheel drive, and they have automatic gearboxes. Now my favorite Q5, I think the pick of the range, the best one overall, is the two litre diesel in S-line trim. Um, what I'm gonna do now is configure one using the CarWow configurator and see what offer I can get back from one of our trusted dealers. And if you'd like to see that offer I've got, I've done a link to it. So just click on that pop-out banner up there. You can go check out the offer. Okay, let's see what this Audi Q5 is like to drive. So round town, really very good. You sit up nice and high so you get a good view out. Bit of a blind spot caused by this pillar, but it's not too bad. The out the back window is good and you've got obviously parking sensors, reversing camera and those kind of things to help you park. There's a bit of a thick rear pillar, which is a bit annoying when you're filtering out of those kind of like junctions onto motorways and stuff like that, pulling out your driveway. But it's very similar for other SUVs of this size. The controls are light. So for town driving and maneuvering, that is really, really good. The turning circle's all right as well. It's 11.7 meters, in case you're wondering, which is slightly better than the BMW X3 and the Mercedes GLCs. So that's all good. Over bumps at low speed, the suspension does a decent job. This is the sportiest suspension in this car, and it's not quite as soft and comforting as you get in a Volvo XC60. In fact, if you'd like to see more about the XC60 and get my verdict on it, I've done a video review and I've just put a little link to it. It'll be popping out in the top right corner of the screen. You can watch that if you want to. But round town, generally very easy, and the automatic gearbox helps. It's good at shuffling the gears together, and then when you want to pick up speed, it responds pretty well as well. Oh yeah. Now, when you get up to motorway speeds, this car is really nice and relaxing to travel in. The seats are great. It's quiet. You don't get much wind noise. You don't get much tire noise either. It's very, very good. This two litre petrol engine is pretty responsive. I'm going to floor it now and see how long it takes me to get to 70. So here we go, floored it. Yeah, responds well, 70. No problem at all. And the engine doesn't whine too much either. As for the economy, well, let me just have a quick check. So this one is averaging 32 miles per gallon. If you're gonna be doing lots of motorway miles, I would suggest you go with one of the diesels. The diesel engine actually really suits this car. Finally then, if you encounter a twisty road, how does this car perform? Well, I could put it into sports mode. In fact, because I can, I will. Now, because I haven't got the air suspension, it doesn't stiffen anything up. It just adds a bit of weight to the steering makes the gearbox a little bit more responsive and the throttle. For a tallish car, it grips and goes around corners really, really well. Obviously, you've got four-wheel drive, which improves your traction as well for exiting corners or if you're driving on the snow. It handles all right. The steering is responsive. And look, see how quick I can go around this corner. Can't even see my speedo. Whoa, whoa, whoa. We're on the limit. Sliding at 80, <laughs> 86. <laughs> oh, I got a bit sketchy there. But heck, you can fling this thing about. <laughs> God, oh, it's because I was busy trying to light see my speed. <laughs> I couldn't see because my steering wheel was blocking it. One last thing I want to do, and that is check this engine's performance. So Audi says this car will do 0 to 60 in 6.1 seconds, but I want to see for myself. So I've got my specialist timing gear down here and I've handily mounted it on the cover for that pointless cubby. Ideal for the specialist timing. <laughs> yeah. Right, I've got the car in sports mode, sports mode for the gearbox. I've got the stability in sports mode as well. It's got a sort of launch control. Look at this, left foot on the brake, floor the throttle, hold the revs, release the brake. Off we go. Oh, brutal gear change. It's going for it. Nord 60, 5.56 seconds. What will be the standing quarter mile? Come on, don't run out of road. 14.14 seconds. That's fairly quick, that is. And I'll tell you what's impressive, this engine, it's strong, and it always remains quite quiet. It's not bad. So then, what's my final verdict on the revised Audi Q5? 
Should you avoid it? Should you consider it? Should you shortlist it? Or should you just go right ahead and buy it? Well, I reckon you should shortlist the Q5. It really is a good all-round family SUV. I hope you all enjoyed the video. If you did, please give it a like. Now, if you click on that window there, you can watch an Audi Q5 drag race, or if you click down there, you can watch the previous generation Q5 go head to head with the BMW X3 and a Mercedes GLC in a group test. It's pretty much the same car, so you'll get the idea. And if you click on that box there, you can go to CarWow to see how much money you can save on a new car. Alternatively, just Google help me CarWow and my team while I will help you choose the right car for you and get it for a fair price from one of our trusted dealers. Sad. I never believed when I saw you for the first time. I changed my mind. Your eyes and your smile are a fantasy. I need.